Hi there, this is AfriSquare Chronicles, where we look at our news and forum archives on AfriSquare Dubs Africa. Today we'll be looking at something very interesting, written by Favor Emmanuel, talking about African hairstyles, tattoos, and scarifications. My name is Chukwe Buka, and this is AfriSquare.tv. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Hi there, this is still AfriSquare Chronicles on AfriSquare.tv. African hairstyles, tattoos, scarifications. But I will not be talking about all of these alone. I have special people here with me in the building. I have Engineer Kings right here, Afroevangelist, African to the bone. He's here in the building. Good to have you again, sir. Uh, thank you, Ibuka, for having me today. And of course, we have the beautiful Uzo. Good to see you. Thank you so much for You're having welcome. me today. Quickly, let's look at this concept of scarification, tattoos, and hairstyles on the African continent. Now, a lot of people think that hair is just hair. But here we are, about to find out there's a lot more about the human hair, especially on the continent of Africa, that we already know. Engineer Kinsley, yeah. let me come to you. Okay. Tell us more about this. Is there a lot more to the hair of Africans that we already know? Yeah, the styles of hair, they are symbolic. In some cases, um, they denote uh, your role in the society, your position, maybe your tribe. You know, in some cases, it might denote your background, you know, where you're coming from, your kind of spiritual content. You know, maybe you are a priest or something, you know. In some cases, it denotes award and achievement. If you attend certain feet, you know, they bribe you in certain style. Mm. You understand? So when you look at somebody with, uh, for example, with um, a red clay hair, mm. you know, tribalistically, you might suggest or suspect this person might be from Himba tribe in Namibia. You know, the northern part of Namibia. There's this tribe that have to have their hair on a red clay hairstyle, you know. So these are the, the, the symbolism that uh, comes from the hairstyle. That of priesthood in particular, there are many lineage where certain, either the first male child or certain person is in charge of administering their way of worship. And they have to bab them, have to have a certain hairstyle. So once you see that hairstyle, you say, oh, this is a priest. You understand? It becomes an issue of identity emanating from your hairstyle. So it's, hair is not just hair in Africa. Or hair wasn't just hair in Africa. We are hoping that we, are, you know, this, we can say that for today. <laughs> All right. Uh, which is the essence of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Bring back our consciousness. Yes. And, us and look at them. Yes. Better. Exactly. Thank you so much for Thank that. Thank you. Let me come to you, uh, Ms. Uzo. Tell us quickly, what else is special about the African hair? You know, um, in in the community, could easily tell the attention one pays to themselves from the hair. Mm. If someone's hair is shaggy, you say, "Okay, this person looks unkept." Mm. It it keeps coming up. And apart from that, um, during the ancient times, some communities had this belief that you, the hair could help with divine communication. So Whoa. they also believed that they it stood for something so great that. Like even with this belief, the, you do you don't let any other person apart from entrusted family members touch her because it's just something as simple as a strand of your hair in the wrong hands could be very very detrimental. Mm. Then also coming to the symbolization, the elaborate hair hairstyles are left for the royalties mm. and other. You could even tell a new mother mm. from the My hairstyle. Hair, yeah. Yes, it, yes, Morning, exactly. of course, from the hairstyle because you know that if someone is taking care of the person's hair, you can't be mourning and be taking care of it. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Uh, that, that's it. So, so from the foregoing, we can say, uh, Engineer King, yeah. uh, there's a whole lot of symbolism. To say, yeah. or there's a whole lot to tell yeah. about the people or yeah. a person yeah. from just their hairstyle. Their hairstyle. There's, yeah. there's a whole lot of symbolism. Uh, exactly. Can you, can you break, down some more, break that down some more for us? Yes, just like we're taking it. Um, essentially, we are just hoping that there has not been a lot of divergence because somewhere along the line, we stopped. We stopped doing it, you know, so that symbolism became just issues of faction today. You understand? But then it wasn't just of a faction. Like we've classified before, priesthood, royalty, achievement, tribes, and all that. And he stood for that then. And we're just hoping that we could restore that symbolism, that we are not just sacrificing everything on the altar of faction. Yes, it's okay to be pleasing. It's pleasing to look good. It's okay to think, oh, they are fashionable, but fashionable with respect to what? 
you know, when you're putting on a certain hairstyle, someone else could be reading a different meaning to it, and you are ignorantly doing it. You understand? Simply because it looks good. You are not in consonance with the society. So that's just what it is. So, so fashion, there is fashion. Yes. And then there is cultural and meaning. symbolism. Yes. There's meaning to yes. their style. That's right. Nicely put. You're still watching Afri Square Chronicles on Afri Square the TV. We're talking about hairstyles on the African continent, not just hairstyle. Uh, hairstyle. We're talking about tattoos and scarification. My name is Jukwe Mika. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. This is still Afri Square Chronicles on Afri Square TV. African hairstyles, tattoos, scarifications. Now, let's talk about tattoos. Engineer Kings. Yeah. A lot of people believe that tattoos are something from the Western culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, few people know, a few people yeah. understand that yeah. there are some African connections to this thing called tattoo or tattooing. Yes. Tell us about this. Please. Well, um, is there anything that people do not think started from Africa, from a Western culture? <laughs> <laughs> anything happening today, they, they want to find a way of making a Western thing, mm -hmm. you know, or originating from the West, the West, you know. I mean, there is this funny saying that... Um, Christopher Columbus discovered uh, America. America. Whereas when he got there, people were already living there. <laughs> Maybe if you have time, we could go and discover Australia next week. <laughs> so, I mean, tattoos has always been there. Scarification, body marks, and all that. It's always been there. Some tribe, when you see their mark, yeah. you know this person is from here. When you see their badge here, so this is of these dynasties, of this, this just as hair. Mm. Tattoos are symbolic too. They communicate generational messages. Mm. There are certain times some inscriptions are made on the back of a baby to communicate to generations upon generations. They will be like the first son of that child when he becomes adult, he or she becomes adult. The first uh, son, uh, uh, child of that person will also have that inscription retained and it continues within the generation. And at the end of third, fourth, fifth generation, you can find a certain meaning out of those things. So, you know, they keep saying Africans don't write, we didn't start writing, we didn't keep our records in writing. I mean, it, it's reading. not completely true. There are certain writings that we kept that was not in today's writing. So those are like scarifications, those tattoos, those inscriptions, those marks, those whatever. They were not just fashion. But today, like I said earlier, we, we all sacrifice everything on the altar of fashion. You know, that identity is a very strong part of tattoo. That communication is a very strong part of tattoo. You understand? So that is what it was. It didn't start from the Western world where I'm not authoritatively saying it, but Africa didn't copy it from anywhere. Yes. I mean, it's, it's always been... It has always been with us. I mean, yes, because um, the, 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 for the best we can remember, uh, in the last two centuries, the domination of um, Western uh, culture has been finding its way into African culture. But Africans have lived for thousands of years without all these things. And this practice has been with them. Yeah. Miss Uzo, fashion. I mean, um, Engineer Kings had mentioned, talked about fashion, uh, tattooing and scarification being an offshoot of fashion. I mean, he touched on that. Mm -hmm. but, but let's come to you now. Fashion or a cultural orientation. What is tattooing becoming now? Um, right now, it's yes. becoming a fashion statement. But I think we, we should also look back at whatever it was before. I think we should, as we should look at it as what it is or what it was before. Now, apart from being aesthetically pleasing, it had cultural beliefs and it was um, personal ideals and all those things. You see, um, sometimes the, it, it, it even signifies spirituality. You see that some um, some of some of these tattoos they were forms of protection. They use it to ward off um, evil spirits from a newborn baby. Probably when someone is so sick, they tend to do this um, epidemic alterations on the person. So I think we should also look. We should start looking at it with its significance because by the time things start losing their importance, mm -hmm. it's it's it becomes shallow, and we are not meant to be shallow. Africans are not shallow people, yeah. so we should look into that. All right, so we should look at it beyond fashion. Yeah. Beyond, yes, it goes skin. beyond skin deep. Mm -hmm. We should look at yes. skin uh, alterations. There's a lot more to it. And lot we more should to pay it. attention to those other symbolic meanings of, course. Uh, of tattooing. Interesting. All right, well, we're still talking about this. This is Afri Square Chronicles. 
tattooing, hairstyles, and scarifications. That's what we're talking about. Uh, my name is Jukwe Bukaste. We'll also we'll come back and take it to another dimension. This is Alpha Square Chronicles. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is still Afri Square Chronicles on AfriSquare.tv. We've been talking about some significant things on the African continent. We talked about hairstyles. We talked about tattooing. Uh, but but let's get the final. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up now. I'll come to you, Engineer Kings. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. What are your final thoughts by way of advantages, disadvantages, or whatever? What are your final thoughts on tattooing yeah. and hairstyles? On the African continent. Yeah, I, I think essentially we should pay more attention to the significance of all this. Mm. And like uh, Uzo said, we, we are not shallow people. Uh, you know, Africans are uh, very spiritual people. You know, deep rooted people in thinking. I mean, if you every solution Africans prefer, you tend to see that it's very organic. Like they use these uh, teeth of a snake mm. to heal somebody who suffered from a bite of snake mm -hmm. and venom and all that. And we're thinking they were updated, but the vaccine of today, if you're gonna take any antivirus, it's actually a virus that you are taking. <laughs> it's a virus that is actually antivirus. So the originality, the organic content is with Africa. We shouldn't jettison it to what is shallow. We shouldn't throw it away for what is shallow. Let us pay attention to the significance of all these without just um, living at the altar of uh, faction. That's what I'm telling you. Interesting. Significant, significant, significant. Yeah. Uh, Miss Uzo, quickly, final thoughts. Where would you, um, how would you tie this whole thing up as regards hairstyles and tattoos? Mm -hmm. quickly. You, you can see that um, with the hairstyling thing, it has so many advantages. One of the advantages I, I love the most is the social bonding. It brings people together. Now, you notice that most times women, they've learned so many things from a salon. They've learned, um, you could get advice, life hacks, even recipes from a salon. Just, it's, it's a way of coming together. Then coming to the tattooing part, you realize that when the slaves were returned, they were, they, they were re reunited with their people because of the scar they had on them right. you see this significant yes they were identified they saw the scan they said this is my person and mm. they took them in so it's um, i mean it's deeper than we think yes, that yes scars it is. and tribal marks um they, they're deeper than we think yeah of course right. well said we've heard it all well we've not heard it all but mm. we've done justice to the subject matter of hairstyles scarification tattoos on the continent of africa so when next you see someone draw a tattoo don't think it's a Western thing. Africans have been drawing tattoos for years. <laughs> My name is Chukwe Buka. This is the size of our package of this episode of Afri Square Chronicles. We'll see you next time. Until then, go to the comment section. Tell us what you think about this material. And of course, you can see all the materials on AfriSquare.tv. Until we come your way next time, bye-bye.